Good morning, y'all. Here at the baptistry, we're getting ready for a uh, baptism today. Uh, God is just so good. He's been uh, so faithful, as he said he would. Uh, I was thinking to myself, you know, really praying as to what to talk about today, because we didn't have any questions this week. And this concept of baptism is something that, that really, I think, messes with people's heads. We We get all the wrong ideas about it. It is, of course, Jesus Christ who saves us, but he commands that we be baptized. Yesterday in our men's group, we had a big discussion about this. We were uh, going over Acts chapter 2, and it says that the people were pierced to the heart, and they asked, what shall we do? And the apostle Peter stated, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins and for the free gift of the Holy Spirit. But what is baptism? Baptism, the word, means to be immersed, to be wrapped up in. Literally to, uh, in this case, to go underwater. Uh, and the symbolism of it should not be lost on us. Baptism is a surrendering. It is also a dying, and it is also a rebirthing. When we, uh, when Nicodemus approached Jesus by night, Jesus told him, "If anyone is to see the kingdom, he must be born again." He said, "That which is of the flesh is of the flesh, but that which is of the spirit is of the spirit." We cannot see spiritual things apart from the spirit we cannot receive the spirit unless we're born again and so when we go to this place it's not a ritual cleansing it's not something we do over and over and over again because we feel we've done bad it is you know we have the cross right here behind ours I'll show you it is crucifixion of our flesh Jesus said if anyone is to come after me he must first deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. The cross is a death sentence. So outside of the water, this is our offering to Christ. Our flesh, our old self, our thoughts, our wants, our wishes and desires. That word repent that the Apostle Peter told the people doesn't merely mean to turn from your sins. It means to return to God. And so we are putting an end putting to death our rebellion. And then we are burying it. That's the symbolism of going underwater. We are putting to death and burying our flesh, our desires, our wickedness. We are putting to death our rebellion against the God who designed us. And we are rising again a new creation in Christ. And just as with Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones, God breathes life into us by giving us the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit teaches us and interprets us. Now I'm going to tell you all something. This baptistry, it's not the end. It's not the end. It's the beginning of the journey. We still have much to do. Let's break down the Great Commission. Jesus says, go, or as you are going on your way, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now let's consider that. Make disciples, first their followers. Then when they believe, they become baptized. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Then teaching them to obey all I've commanded you. After this, it's a rebirth. You're baby. You're born again. And it's a maturing process. And sometimes we get selfish in our faith. Sometimes we are children in our faith. Sometimes we are teenagers in our faith. But it's a maturing process by which we all must go through. And then we ourselves get mature and we come to Christ and we uh, 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 bring others to this place. And we then ourselves become spiritual parents and we raise other people up. It's a never-ending process. Sheep beget sheep. But it's the process of being born again. It's not a process of, of just coming and getting clean. Christ makes you clean. He forgives you from your sins. He puts your name in His book of life. But we come here 
out of obedience to Christ to to be born again. We are, are made new in Christ. The act of baptism is a death to the old and a birth of the new. It's important. Now, why is it important? We go through the entirety of the book of Acts. We, we go through the New Testament. We see baptism mentioned over and over and over again. I give you an example from the Ethiopian eunuch and, and the deacon Philip. Philip was a, an evangelist. On top of being a deacon, he preached in Samaria. And then God put him on the side of this road and says, Wait, and, and a, this Ethiopian eunuch who served in the course of Candace... Uh, the queen of Ethiopia served in the court there he's reading from the scroll of Isaiah and he doesn't understand what he's saying and Philip explains it to him and during the course of that conversation whatever uh, was said at that point the Ethiopian eunuch stops the carriage and he said there is water why should I not be baptized it's the process to be born again it's, it's that process and once we are raised up again, it's not the end. We have to continue to grow in Christ. And we grow through the Word of God. We mature through the Word of God. In 1 Corinthians, Paul laments that they're still drinking milk when he thinks they should be eating meat. And this is where it comes from. We need to grow through our knowledge of Christ. And we grow through our knowledge of Christ through the Word of God. Romans ten seventeen says, Faith comes by hearing and hearing through the Word of Christ. Baptism isn't the end. It's the beginning of it. And God wants to take our lives and conform us into the image that he designed us to be. In the beginning, he made us in his image. He wants us to bring us back to that image. And in our rebellion, we can't have that. In our rebellion, it cannot exist. And so we die. We are buried. And we are born again. Are you born again today? Have you been reborn? And if not, what is taking you so long to get to that point? I hope this helps. I hope this makes sense. I've had some people ask me about this in private. But I want you to uh, ask yourself, have I been born again? And if not, what is taking you so long? The water is always nice. Because that's where we leave the old self. And that's where we uh, are, are buried with Christ. And that's where we rise again in Him, a new creation. I hope and I pray this makes sense. Search the scriptures for yourself. Don't go based on church tradition. Don't go based on what someone told you. Search the scripture for yourself. Christ himself was baptized. Watch and see how this act transforms the heart and the mind and the soul of Christ Jesus. God bless you. I'm praying for you. I love you.